All right, folks, it's Jake from Metalwani, and I am here today with Eric Danielson from Watain. Eric, how are you today? I'm pretty good, actually. While I'm talking to you, I am finishing the painting of the last backdrops that we're getting ready for the upcoming tour. The rest of the guys are in South America already working on some uh, some of the steel and iron parts for the stage. And yeah, we're, we're, we're getting ready to, to get on the road again. Yeah, very nice. So I guess we'll start off. You guys have your, your first headlining Australian tour coming up. So it's taken 20 years, but Watain's finally headlining in the land down under. How does it feel to finally be headlining down here? Well, you know, the, the tours we have done in the past, the first one we did was at Soundwave Festival, which was, you know, obviously a huge festival, a bit weird to do as a first visit to Australia, but still it somehow served its purpose. But the other two were with, uh, one with Behemoth and one with Mayhem. And I think, you know, it was, sure, it, we were not headlining, but we were still, we, we got all the, the space that we needed and we, we you know, we, we didn't really see them as support tours. So... Of course, it's it's great to have to have your logo big on the poster, but at the same time, the most important thing for us is just to be back down there, you know, and go to New New Zealand for the first time will be fucking amazing, and uh, no, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be great, and it's also a part of a much longer tour. Actually, we're taking off already in a week, or I am. The other guys are already in South America. We'll start off there, then head over to Australia after that. New Zealand and then up to Asia so it's yeah it's a full-on two-month fucking mayhem <laughs> yeah very nice very nice so as you touched on you have been down here before like three or four times now um how are the Australian crowds compared to the crowds elsewhere in the world for Watain um I, I mean I only when, when anyone mentions Australia I think we all everyone in the band gets pretty you know, excited because it's, it's it's always been a country where we had a lot of uh, contacts you know other bands and uh, there's always there's this obviously this rich old underground scene from from the 80s and early 90s so I think when, when we every time we played we kind of had that in mind and it, it does reflect in the audience as well. It does reflect in the response. I think people down there know that we have a lot of, you know, connections to Australia and there's this natural flow with our music and, and the spirit of the metalheads down there, you know. There's, there's this savage kind of old school vibe down there that that that's also very present in in the way we work so no no it, it's it's only only good experiences so far but it, yeah it's going to be it's going to be cool of course to do shows where you know that people bought the tickets to to see you primarily of course that's that's going to be that's going to be really cool yeah yeah definitely so I guess I, I do want to like touch back on your very first time in Australia when you you did perform as part of Soundwave Festival and sure I, I know that we are as you mentioned like there's obviously uh, a lot of connection between the band and Australia but did you anticipate the type of reaction that you received during those shows for Soundwave? Um, to be honest, I I don't really remember so much from the reactions of the crowd we were playing quite late because we brought our entire pyro production which is still a huge black hole in our old economy <laughs> <laughs> it was like the most i don't know how the fuck we were thinking but uh uh we, we were playing quite late we were play, playing in between in flames and machine Head or some weird bands like that that we have like almost nothing in common with so I don't know. It, it, we we were kind of outsiders on that festival. I think Marilyn Manson or something like that was headlining. There were no other extreme metal bands, really. You know, so um, it's uh, it, it was interesting for sure. Uh, it's cool that we could do the full the full production at least, and, and you know, experience that. I mean, the festival was in itself was fucking amazing. You know, we had we were really well taken care of us. Almost, so, yeah, 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 nice. So this time around, you're playing some very intimate venues on this run. Um, Watain's always been a band with a very in-your-face to approach to, um, I don't want to say your music, but more so your performance, because I know that your music is only one aspect of the whole picture for Watain. Sure. So um, 
the performance is where everything comes together so the smells the ambience the lighting the pyro as you mentioned can the australian fans expect similar on this run of shows well um we are flying of course in between every show and we're coming from from south america so the uh, possibilities of bringing stuff is not really you know huge where everything that you'll see on our stage is stuff that we've been able to check in on the flights yeah. <laughs> so, so it's kind of, it's, a, it's a compressed show but at the same time it's very it's it's going to be quite detailed and and and, and uh yeah th- there's definitely going to be elements of, of so to say a traditional Watain show but a bit a bit more downsized you could say but but it's you know that's that's cool also because that i've talked to you know when i talk to people in europe that have seen us a few times over here with the full production or even on festivals where it's like 10 times as big a lot of those people are, are quite envious of you know these these shows that we're going to do on this upcoming tour where it's going to be far more intimate smaller clubs like you said uh, and um, yeah, much more like motorheadish kind of in your face vibe, you know. W- with a band like us, that's that's a pretty yeah. That, that that's it's gonna be a thing on its own for sure. Uh, plus, we have we have some people from our uh, from our fan club who are uh, who we're working together with on some some of the stage props as well down there. So yeah, it, there's gonna be. Yeah, there's going to be enough for everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's actually a really good lead-in because I I am aware that there are some of the people in the as you mentioned like the fan club that are helping out with some of the backdrops and the stage props and that sort of thing. That's so right. Yeah. Did you yeah. ever think when when starting the band out twenty years ago that your global network um, would expand to that sort of reach that you'd be able to have that sort of a fan club helping out you from across the other side of the globe? Well, I mean, I, I always, uh, we were always very aware of, you know, uh, underground community in, in in black and death metal, and we were very keen early on, even before we started the band, to to get involved in that, and to, we had a lot of contacts, you know, all over the world from pretty early on. Uh, but never in any really organized manner. It was just, yeah, well, there were contacts and we were helping each other out, you know, between underground bands, between each other. Um, as far as this, you know, club thing goes, it's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty unique thing. And it's, uh, it's something that I've always been, you know, like Bathory always had their Bathory Hordes and Venom had their Venom Legions and Sodom had, you know, Sons of Aedas. And, and it's, I've always been, been fascinated and and also very appreciative of, of that kind of idea. I think it's it's very I don't know. It's it's humbling when 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 people get organized to you know in your name, so to say. You know, it's 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 something that is that I'm still trying to wrap my head around. But uh, it's definitely working, and it's uh, you know people are staying busy. They're creative people who really you know want to help out without getting any. You know, they're 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 just doing it to support the band, which is which is unbelievably, you know, it, it, that really, if anything, makes me makes me proud. Yeah, nice. So, this time around, you're touring in support of your latest album, which is Trident Wolf Eclipse. This is an album that's a little over 12 months old now. I think it hit 12 months yeah, old a couple like of days that. ago. So. Um, yeah, just just the other day. Yeah, it's a, it's a very strong. It's also a very symbolic album for the band. It's very aggressive. It's melodic, and it's all, almost a little bit primal at times too. So, I guess I want to know how have the fans been treating the new newer material live over the last year? Well, we, we've only done um, the headline tours for this run, and when you do. Headline tours, obviously, most of what you see in terms of reactions are, you know, the the, the maniacs that are up front and that that are racing hell together with us. So my my uh, my view on you know how, how people have been reacting have that that's the view that I have. So so it's it's a bit uh, hard to say anything else than than that it's been you know a very a very good reaction. Uh, but I think in general. 
I think in general people really get the album, you know, it, it's, it's not a complicated album, it's nice to be able to pr present something quite simple and to the point after an album like The Wild Hunt, which was the, the album before that, which was much more, how to say, I wouldn't say more elaborate because there's a lot of detail and there's a lot of there's a lot of depth to to try and wolf eclipse as well, but 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 it was much more complex, you could say, and it was more it dealt with a far wider variety of of uh, emotions and subjects and and, and energies. Uh, so it, it it feels very good to be able to present something quite straightforward that just grabs the listener by the throat and, you know, drags you in or, or well, or spits you out if you're that kind of person. Yes. <laughs> so I guess now I want to switch the topic of conversation to black metal more broadly. And I know you've previously come out and stated that black metal is a very destructive form of art, but to you it represents freedom um, and with that freedom it will always court controversy as something that the band sort of endured a little bit of last year so why do you think that black metal continues to court controversy to this day well i mean you mentioned freedom and it's the key word here you know i mean freedom can easily be seen as something very destructive because it's it's in order to attain the freedom that we're talking about you need to break a lot of boundaries you need, you need to break a lot of rules and you, you need to challenge things that are established as you know norms and that's that, that's usually what what people that that adhere to those norms would call destructive behavior you know so and then the controversial behavior for that matter uh, and I just think it's a very natural outcome of, of, of doing this, you know, to, to be seen in, in the light of controversy and uh, have your work considered taboo and so on and so on. I mean, it should be, it must be to a certain extent, because otherwise you're not in touch with the things that you are singing about. You know, if you if you you got to practice what you preach and if you do that well your your band is going to enjoy or suffer from a lot of you know rumors a lot of controversy a lot of you know random preconceived notions that people spit out because they don't know any better and um, it's just the way it is i mean it's to me it's a uh, uh, it's just a part of the game, you know, and uh, it's it's nothing, it's nothing that you were consciously for. It's just a result of doing something that you love very deeply, and that's you know a bit problematic to, I don't know, normal people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, fair enough. Now, this, I've got one final one for you, Eric, before we sign off here. Sure. So, I'm sure that sure. you're aware and you, you sort of know about the um, the film that's coming out, Jonas Ackerland's uh, Lords of Chaos film, so film that's shedding sure. light on the formative years of mayhem and it's been getting a lot of media attention because it's uh, gearing up for its release next month. Now, I know that Watain's toured with mayhem, but given your beliefs on what black metal should and shouldn't be, are you worried that about the way that the film might paint black metal to a broader audience? No, I'm not. Uh, I've seen the film and uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a gateway into black metal knowledge at all. It's a, it's a movie about, you know, juveniles that do a lot of really extreme things and I don't think that people are going to walk away from that movie thinking that they know a lot about black metal. I don't think that they're going to feel like educated on the history of mayhem or what went down. I think they're going to walk away thinking that they've seen a pretty intense fucking movie. Uh, so no, I'm, I'm not worried the slightest. I mean, that damage as far as I'm concerned with black metal getting too much attention from mainstream media, that happened 15 years ago already. So. You know, to me, that's a that's a lost battle, if you want to call it that. I'm not too concerned myself. Black metal will always live on in the spirit of of those that keep on performing it with dignity and and with reverence. And 
I'm, I'm proud to, to call myself one of them. Wonderful. Eric, thank you so much for your time and we look forward to seeing you when you come down here in early February. Absolutely. We're, we're very eager to get down there. Hope to see a lot of you fuckers at the shows.